This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. The Chris Museum at Southeast Missouri State University now has photographs by Andy Warhol on display, and those photographs are part of the museum's permanent collection. Peter Wynn is the museum's director. Peter, thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you for having me. Uh, Peter, first, what was the um, what was the relationship between Andy Warhol and and his camera? Well, uh, you could say um, he was inseparable from uh, his camera. Uh, he had his cameras wherever he went. So um, what we have in the collection is a perfect example of um, what he was doing pretty much on a daily basis. Now, as I understand, Andy Warhol was a guy that would, anywhere he went, he would be snapping photographs. And so this is really kind of a, a, a good record of things that he saw and things that he, um, and, and things that he did. Yes, this uh, I, w I would definitely say that um, you, if you look at the, the photographs and you come to see the exhibition, you're getting a glimpse into um, Andy Warhol's life. Um, places he went to, people he met, whether they were famous or not, um, and just everyday objects as well. Before we go a, a little bit further into the um, into this photographic collection at the at the, at the museum, why was why was Andy Warhol such an iconic and important figure in the uh, in the art scene in the United States during the during the sixties and seventies and eighties? Well, you know, he started off as a um, in advertising. Um, he was uh, one of the top um, commercial artists um, in New York. Uh, he that's where he started out. And uh, he um, got into uh, and created, you know, the, the pop art movement um, as um, a way to, um, I, I guess you could say, it was a backlash against what was going on at the time. Um, and from there, um, you know, he did so many different things, um, and he had that ability to pull people in to uh, what he was doing. Um, of course, you've heard of his factory and all the things that happened uh, w during that time that he had his factory. You know, he was into film, he was into music, he was into um, art. Um, and so, uh, and a lot of well-known individuals, famous uh, people were talking about uh, uh, came through the studio, um, and you know that was uh, the the pop art movement became um, really big. So he was, uh, I guess you could say, is the 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 person that is the the at the forefront of the pop art movement. Now we have some examples right here of some of the uh, some of the photographs that are on display. Yes, uh, including this one right here. Um, could, could you kind of just des describe what this what this image is about right here? Uh, this is an image of um, Carly Simon, of course, um, and this is a, a Polaroid. Um, Andy Warhol um, used two types of cameras and, and two types of film that that you'll see in the exhibition. Uh, one is Polaroids and the other one uh, is a black and white um, um, superchrome type of film. Um, but um, the Polaroids were more or less used for um, studies that he would later transfer to his paintings. Of course, he's more well known for his paintings and his uh, prints. And do we know? Do we have any idea who uh, who, who this is and his and his dog? Here? Uh, actually, Andy Warhol did not differentiate between someone who was famous and someone who he just happened to take a picture of off the street. Uh, this uh, we don't have a name for this person. It's just uh, a, a man and his dog. So, uh, so you can s sort of see what what I mean when Andy Warhol is just taking. Random pictures. And I know. guess this this picture right here of a of a dog would be yes, another I mean, just kind of just 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 random just, just random, random pictures picture. just like anyone else would. Um, I think there's a, that we have one more picture here as well. Um, yeah, this one here. What do we what do we have here? Well, this is of course uh, Margaret Hamilton. Most most people will remember The Wizard of mm -hmm. Oz, and mm -hmm. she played the Wicked Witch. So, <laughs> 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 but she you know she she uh, sat for him as well. 
And so it, uh, really what this, this looked like is just whatever caught his eye, just whatever looked visually interesting to Andy Warhol, the artist at the time. Yes, He yes. would just, just, just snap a photo. It's almost like having um, Andy Warhol's uh, Instagram account here, at the, here at the museum. I would say exactly. You know, if he was still alive, you know, he would be really into all the, the, the social media stuff that we have today. Um, what's, um, how did the university and how did the museum come into possession of these, these photographs in the first place? Well, the, the, the Andy Warhol Photographic Leg Legacy Program, uh, the, the Andy Warhol F Foundation has a specific program that um, gifted um, all of his photographs to various institutions, um, university galleries, museums, etc. Um, and I started that process when I first got here in 2009. And do we have how many how many uh, photographs does the museum does the museum have uh, have possession of right now? The museum has we were gifted uh, 150 of the photographs. And is there any idea of how many how many photographs in in, in all are uh, are are in existence of? Uh, um, right, right I would s I would say they're probably in the hundreds of thousands because uh, they went through a, a first round of gifting. Um, we were in the second round. Um, so that's how many institutions are out there and how many pho photographs he, he created. So. Well, what's, the, what's the significance of this collection? What's the ar artistic semblance here? Well, I think you know, for, for, for anyone, um, the photographs are, you know, because they're any Warhol's work, um, they're also, the, the significance for me um, looking at these is um, getting a history of um, Andy Warhol's everyday activities, his, his life. Or are any of these staged or are these photographs that, um, that, he, ju that he just kind of snapped wherever he went? The, the ones that are staged um, are the ones that um, are the Polaroids. Okay. Um, and, and, and the other ones are the black and whites. Those are more of the, the staged, uh, the staged photographs. No, the the, the Polaroids are the stage. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. The sorry. Polaroids are the stage. The the black and whites are are just random pictures that uh, he would take. Now, is, is Andy Warhol like generally known in the art community as a as a photographer? Uh, Andy Warhol is not typically known as a photographer. Uh, he is more well known for his paintings and his prints. So this is something that's kind of this almost a, a new revelation about the about, um, about the artist. More or less, I would say yes. We've been talking today with Peter Wynn. He's the director of the Chris Museum at Southeast Missouri State University. Peter, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Ahead, William Faulkner's watch and more. That's just ahead on Cape Chronicle. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology.